And okay, you've got the recording happening. Oh, the cameras went off. <laughs> hmm. All right, are we ready to go? There's still three people in the waiting room. Maybe they've disappeared for a minute. I'll admit those three now. Yep, yeah, okay, great. I'll keep an eye on the waiting room. All right. Yep. Great. Um, okay, well, thank you all for uh, coming. Um, my name is, is Heather Anderson and I'm the Honours um, Coordinator for the EBES Department. Uh, Deborah Fitton, if you put up your hand, please. Uh, Deborah is the Department Manager for EBS and if you are an Honours student next year, you'll get to know her well because she organises rooms for you and various other things from time to time. And if you put your hand up, Mariah, um, uh, this is Mariah Nanas and um, Mariah's from Student Services and she's going to uh, show us some things about the website for applying to um, uh, Econometrics Honours um, in 2022. So um, thank you all very much for your interest in, in this program. Um, I've been I've only been the coordinator for six months of this program, um, but I've been involved in this program um, since you were all at primary school. Um, I have been um, sometimes the research coordinator, sometimes taught the financial econometrics and sometimes taught the um, uh, macro econometrics um, in this program. And it's, it's a very nice program. There are 10, maybe 15 students in it every year. Everybody gets to know each other. Um, it's a very high powered program. You learn uh, probably more in the year, uh, honours year than for the rest of your uh, degree. And um, it's designed to not only give you good training in, in your specialty, but to um, uh, give you skills that will help you when you go out into the workforce. So um, let me um, share my screen and I'll take you through some material. Okay, so is there a good view there, um, Deborah? All right, okay. Well, it's a good view for me. Can everybody, can you hear me and see me? Yep, okay, good. Um, okay, so um, let me get started here. And um, um, the way I'm going to run this session is um, I'm going to um, talk quite a bit about the honours degree um, uh, program structure um, and then move on to talking about entry requirements, um, then move on and talk a little bit about the application process, um, scholarships, um, got a list of useful websites and then a list of frequently um, uh, asked questions uh, for those of you who uh, might want to watch, uh, ask questions later. Um, this session is being recorded and the slides uh, will be available to somewhere on the uh, Business School website. I don't know where yet, but um, uh, when it's ready, um, uh, we'll let you all know where it is um, via email, I suppose. Okay, so um, the EBS Honours Program um, offers three majors um, or specialties um, in 2022. Um, one can do um, an Honours Program in Actuarial Studies. Um, one can do a, an Honours Program in Business Analytics um, or an Honours Program in Econometrics. You can actually do any mixture of those that uh, you might be interested in. And you can also do um, a mixture of that um, with the honours program in the Department of Economics as well. Um, the actuarial studies and the business analytics um, programs are very new. Um, and in fact, this year was the first year that we offered them, um, but we had um, two students in each. Um, we're expecting um, more um, uh, 
next year. Um, the econometrics program has been going for a very, very long time, as has the um, um, economics um, program. And we have a good relationship with the Department of Economics in that we share some of the research classes and um, have, have meetings with them from time to time. Okay, so um, what's the core structure associated with um, an honours program? Um, the binding component, if you want to call that, um, is um, a, a research thesis. Uh, which is equivalent to two units of studies, and it goes for the whole of the year. And um, the research thesis is basically working on a project um, for the whole of the year and writing a, um, a, a paper on it. It uh, generally involves some empirical analysis as well as some interpretive discussion um, and um, sometimes some uh, programming and, and other, other um, things that people in EBS do. Um, so that's the binding um, component. Everybody has to do that course, regardless of whether you're um, uh, a joint major, um, an actor, just an actuarial studies a student, or just in one of those components, everybody has to do the thesis. Um, and in addition to the thesis, um, everybody has to do six coursework units and typically um, three of those are undertaken in the first semester and three of those are undertaken in the second semester. Um, very occasionally, um, some people are allowed to take third year level units, um, including some that are uh, double coded with um, uh, fifth level units, um, particularly if they um, need something to, uh, as a prerequisite for something else that's in the honours program, um, that's, that's sometimes allowed. Um, the structure though, uh, most of the courses come from um, EBS, taught in EBS or economics. Um, occasionally some of the units are taught from the maths department um, and some from the computing department as well. Um, all details are in the online handbook and I've given you the um, address there and I tried it out last night and it worked for me so hopefully it works for you. And uh, let me now go on to uh, some specific detail. If you want to be uh, doing honours in actuarial studies, then um, this is the setup that will be um, uh, basically your, the units that you'll be taking. You have to do the honours research project. Um, the actuarial students that I have um, seen to date have all done an honours research project on something related to actuarial uh, studies. It might be a, a financial econometrics project. Um, it might be a simulation project that, that looks at how different sorts of insurances work in different um, settings, but um, the project is, is important component. One of the nice things about the um, actuarial studies um, program is that the next two units, Actuarial Practice 1 and Actuarial Practice 2, are both units that count for the part two of the actual um, certification. Um, so it's actually very useful to do some honours in actuarial studies because you can do honours as well as um, keep qualifying for the courses that you need to have passed um, to get your actuarial uh, professional qualification. Um, Another compulsory course in the actuarial studies is um, Introduction to Machine Learning, um, which is becoming um, widely used in all sorts of industries, including um, um, actuarial practice. In addition to those um, uh, four units that we've got there, or five actually, because the project counts for two, um, you need to do three other units. And um, I've listed them uh, there. Uh, Actuaries need to know quite a lot of statistics. So the first course there is quite useful. Um, and many of the concepts in actuary trade off between, um, let's say, health and wealth, or, or thinking about preferences versus um, price. Those, those sorts of things are covered in microeconometrics. Uh, financial econometrics is also relevant. 
and then given um, the wealth of data that's becoming available nowadays, high dimensional data analysis is often a useful course for actuarial students to take as well. Some actuarial studies students take um, uh, courses from the maths department and um, some also have taken courses from the um, computing department of, or um, uh, I've forgotten what they call themselves at the moment, FIT um, there. You can do a program in business analytics. Um, you need to do the um, honours research project, like all honours students. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of courses there that um, you need to choose from, um, all of which have to do with uh, working with data and the statistics behind working with data. And again, there are other units um, uh, such as those from the maths that you, or from the um, um, computing um, people um, that you can uh, take as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. These other units, um, you need um, my permission or the honours coordinator permission to take them. Um, it also has to be um, negotiated with the other department and the other department needs to uh, be convinced that you have sufficient background to be able to take their courses before they'll let you in. So you can't just automatically uh, enrol in them, um, but you can do them. Um, and then the econometrics um, uh, honours, um, which has been going for a long time and um, is, I suppose, the most general of, of the three programs that the econometrics department runs. Um, the project um, is one of the units that um, uh, needs to be done, or actually two. And then um, uh, three units that have a lot of econometrics in them. Um, there's a statistics course there, the macroeconometrics, uh, microeconometrics, financial econometrics, um, Bayesian econometrics. Um, you can take three or more of them, um, but then you can also um, take any of the actuarial um, uh, uh, units there, um, introduction to machine learning, um, some of the um, business analytics units, um, and again, um, some econometric students sometimes take a unit from the maths department or again from um, uh, the computing department. Um, and um, this very broad list um, enables people who want to um, do a joint program in econometrics and let's say actuarial studies or econometrics and business analytics. Um, and you can um, do, do a mixture of those um, provided you have uh, my, my approval. Uh, okay, let me move um, down here. Uh, I went too far. Um, and then the other thing you can do, so there's lots of flexibility here. Um, you can major in any of the two EBS majors, which I've already said. Um, or um, you can do one EBS major together with um, um, an economics major. And um, if you do that, um, you need to do either a research project in um, EBS on an EBS type topic, um, or a research project in the economics department or an economics topic. Often um, the difference between these is pretty fuzzy other than um, um, they have different uh, research coordinators, but we do have uh, many of our classes together and we do listen to each other's presentations and that sort of thing. Um, and then um, you can take three um, units from um, uh, whatever is considered your first major. So if you um, are doing a joint honours in economics and EBS, but you're really a bit more economics than you are EBS, then you uh, would take three Q, Q core units from there, and then three core units from uh, your other major. And again, variations are allowed. Um, they need to be approved. I have to make sure that you've got a sensible combination of courses um, that are likely to lead to a coherent transcript at the end of your degree. Um, because employers like coherent transcripts, uh, transcripts 
uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that um, can sometimes look like you don't know very much about anything. So it's much better to have a sort of a major with uh, similar, similar courses if you can. Um, entry requirements. All applicants will be assessed by, um, there's a little committee in um, EBS. And um, the main thing we're looking for is whether you've got the prerequisites and you've demonstrated the business, uh, and demonstrated the ability to be able to complete the honours year successfully. Um, this is the most important thing. Um, we want to make sure that people who get into the honours program are going to succeed. Um, so we do look at whether the prerequisites have been satisfied and we also look at um, uh, ability in the sense of how well you've done in other courses in the past, in other relevant courses I might say in the past, relevant being uh, highly mathematical courses or courses with a lot of statistics, a lot of econometrics or a lot of economics. Um, for Monash graduates, this usually means um, that you have the right undergraduate major for whatever it is that you want to specialise in. So you do need to have some background. Um, you need to have the right um, uh, prerequisites for the honours uh, year units. Um, these are going to be mostly fourth year units and fifth year units. Um, and often the fourth years and the fifth years have their classes together. Um, so you have to have enough prereqs to be eligible for those sorts of classes. And the other thing that has to happen is that you have to have an average of 70%, um, not over everything you've ever done at university, but over the units that are going to um, make up uh, the background that you're going to be using to do your honours um, uh, program on. So we would be looking for average percentage, uh, average of 70% in your statistics courses, maybe your econometrics courses, uh, your undergraduate uh, business analytics courses, uh, mathematics courses, those, those sorts of things which um, uh, use the uh, or provide the fundamentals for doing courses at advanced level in econometrics or statistics or, or it's, it's related, very, uh, related um, topics. Now, there's no hard and fast rule. Um, we do look at each applicant on a case-by-case -case basis and then get the broad picture of, of what uh, abilities are and how well you would fit into the honours program. And um, for applicants outside of Monash, and we do have people coming from Melbourne and from Adelaide and from Perth and sometimes from overseas, um, for applicants from outside Monash, then the applicants also will be considered on a case-by-case -case consideration where we'll be looking at the sorts of units that they've taken um, for their undergraduate degree and how well they tie up with what our units are at Monash. Again, to make sure that they've got the right background to be able to handle an advanced year of, of study. Application process. Um, applications are, are due on the 30th of November. Uh, now that might scare you for a minute because you're thinking, well, I won't have finished my degree yet but you don't have to worry about that because um, uh, at least you won't have your results for finishing your degree. Um, we'll, we'll be able to chase them down from student services. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, domestic uh, students, um, there's basically a, a form that you have to fill out and a statement of purpose letter where uh, the statement of purpose letter is, is basically just about 500 words on why you want to do honours, um, a bit about what your aspirations are and how you think that honours would help you um, uh, meet the requirements that are going to make sure that you have a successful career, um, all, all of that sort of stuff. Um, the international applications, um, similar sort of theme, um, but more questions um, on the online uh, link and perhaps uh, Mariah can um, uh, talk a, a little bit more about that when she shows you um, uh, or takes you through the website 
um, that you need to know your way around when you're applying for honours. Um, the application link, um, I think you can get there via several uh, routes, um, but one of the routes that will work is, is um, find a, a course link, or I think it works. Um, now, um, uh, Mariah will um, show you um, through the application uh, websites shortly. Um, there's just a little bit more that I want to say before I turn my screen over to her. Um, scholarships. There are scholarships called um, EBS Honours Memorial Scholarships. There are about five available um, each year. Um, they're for about $15,000 in cash. Um, if we have a good set of applicants, we might increase that a little bit. If the set of applicants is a little bit weaker one year, we might not have five, we might have three or four. Um, uh, you do not need to apply separately. Um, if you apply for the um, uh, EBS um, Honours Program, you will automatically be considered um, if you are a domestic student. I think uh, Mariah will correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, there's also some uh, scholarships called uh, Monash Jubilee Scholarships. Um, these are university-wide things. There are 35 available every year uh, for $6,000 each. Um, I think behind that, there is a, um, uh, there has to be evidence that the scholarship is needed for you to be able to study, but again, Maria, Mariah will be able to uh, tell you a little bit more about that. Um, there are some useful websites there. I checked out this morning, they work. Um, but let me um, stop sharing and um, uh, hand it over to Mariah for a while and um, she'll show you a little bit about the application website and some other relevant stuff. Thank you, Heather. Um, Afternoon all. Um, so just let me share my screen. Um, hopefully you can all see the web page that I have up at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to start off with the find a course uh, site, which Heather talked about just before. Um, this is, I've already opened up the commerce honours year page for in find a course okay we are looking for 2022 so all this has been updated for next year's entry um just so it gives you a little bit about the course description basically um there are called cool and clayton offerings uh generally it is one year full time there can be part-time options but i think heather will um uh, approve or not approve depending on your circumstances whether they'll uh generally it's full-time but you can do part-time study in some of the disciplines it is always a first semester start with honours. There is no second semester entry. Um, and if we scroll down a bit, we have, so there are three tabs here, interest requirements, course structure, applications and fees. So interest requirements. Um, so a little just more about what Heather talked about before. So the basic interest requirements of 70% um, in, so, this does say four units, um, but all relevant units will be taken into consideration um, for the relevant discipline that you're looking at. Um, there are some prerequisites that do be needed. At the moment, it's just the economics ones that are listed online. Um, the other thing I wanted to point you out to uh, is the extra requirements here. Um, so the completion of the honour supplementary form. So uh, Heather referred to this as the statement of purpose letter, which is basically what it is. Um, it's just a, a way for us in the admissions team, when you apply to, if you supply this form to us, it, gives it, it just makes it really easy for us to know exactly which disciplines you want to be considered for in the honours program, because we're getting all the applications for all the disciplines for honours. Um, this just makes it so much easier for us to figure that out, basically. Uh, it is a Word document, so you can edit it um, when you download it, um, and you can just upload it into your application. Mm -hmm. The course structure, um, so it just tells you which disciplines you can go into. 
this link to the course handbook will also um, is the same link as Heather had in her slide as well into the course structure, basically. And then we have applications. Um, the application closing date is on here as well, so the 30th of November um, for this year for next year's entry. It does give you some information about the fees you can expect. So um, if you're a domestic student, uh, it is a Commonwealth supported place that you will be offered. Um, so that is the fee there. Um, and full fee students, so our international students, that is the fee for those students. Um, it won't work for me, but if you do click onto the apply button, it will take you to the login page for the My Application Portal for Monash. Um, so this is where you'll need to go to make your application. Um, so if you have not made an application previously, you will need to set um, set yourself up a My App um, portal. So by clicking the sign up button, um, if you have made an application in the past, um, then you, it should already be linked to an email address for yourself and you should already have a password. And if you have gotten your password, you can reset it. Um, but you'll log in there. It'll give you some initial questions that you'll have to answer. So you name, date of birth, your address, your contact details, um, you know, all those sorts of basic information. And then you'll go through and you'll check, you'll um, find the course that you want to apply for. You can do multiple courses at once in the one application, so up to five courses. Um, and what you want to be doing when you do make your application is you want to be searching for this course code for honours is B3701. That's the course code for the honours program for all disciplines, not just for EBS, but it's for all disciplines. Um, so you'll enter that in the application portal um, so that you can find the course that you want. Um, and then you'll go through other steps. It'll talk about, it'll ask you questions on your past study history. So your undergraduate qualifications, any other qualifications that you might have, any sort of work experience that you want to put into your application. Um, it's a whole range of questions, basically. Um, I think there's, it's about seven steps. Um, last I heard, so just you've just got to go through each step, get to the end, and when you'll make sure you upload all your relevant documentation. Uh, if you are a Monash, current Monash student or a past Monash undergraduate student, um, you don't need to provide your academic transcript. We have that on record, um, so we can access that and uh, pass that on to the coordinators. Uh, if you are applying from outside of Monash, then you will need to provide a transcript for your studies um, and also we want everyone to uh, provide that on a supplementary form which was back on the entrance requirements page okay I think that is about all I need to show you for the application and how to get to the application um, so what I'll probably show you next is the this is just the honours website on the Monash Business School page. Um, you can get to this by, if you're on the Monash Business School homepage, you can go to study future students and you'll see an option to click on to honours. Um, again, just gives you a basic sort of description on the honours program, the different areas of study that you can choose in honours. Again, it has a bit more about the admission requirements, there is another link um, to apply. Um, and each of the departments has their own accordion, which you can click on to, depending on which one you're interested in. So for econometrics, um, just some information there. It talks about the uh, Honours Memorial Scholarship that you can apply with. Um, you might have even clicked on this to register for this session um, through here. So you might already be familiar with this page. Um, and um, and lastly, the university scholarships. So the Jubilee Honours Scholarship, that's a university-wide scholarship that's available. So if you click on the Learn More, it will take you to the scholarships application page. Um, so the Jubilee Honours Scholarship, uh, as Heather advised, uh, is available. 
There are 35 available per year, and this is across the university. So it's not just um, the business honours students, it is the arts honours students, the science honours, IT honours, it's across the board. Um, up to $6,000 in a year, uh, applications um, not open yet. They will open, I believe, from the 17th of January next year. So you should already by that point know whether you have an offer to study in honours, so you'll know whether it's a good idea for you to apply for this scholarship or not by that point. Um, and we'll close by the 4th of March 2022. Um, talks about some your eligibility requirements to be eligible for the scholarship um, and the selection criteria that they the, the central scholarships team will look at when assessing applications for this particular scholarship. Um, there also is uh, how to retain the scholarship if you are eligible to receive it. Um, so you will have to maintain a weight average mark of 70 each semester during your own year. Uh, and then it's got the application button. It will take you to, uh, I believe it's a, the, actually the same application portal. It's the old version of the application portal that they have for scholarships, um, but very similar and I think you're uh, login will work across the application portal and the scholarship portal. And lastly, uh, I just wanted to also add is that, so applications are due by the 30th of November. We know that you're, as Heaven advised, you don't have, we know that your results won't be out by that point. Um, but once they do come out, um, we forward all that information through to the honours coordinators. Um, they'll do their assessment part with their admission committees uh, and they will generally give us an outcome um, within a week or so once results are released. So our aim is to have all the outcomes to students, whether that be successful or unsuccessful in your application, um, by the last working day of 2021 before Christmas. So that will be the 22nd of December is, will be our aim to get all those outcomes out to you. So you'll receive either an offer in writing or an unsuccessful outcome in writing through email. I think that's it, Heather. Okay, well, um, uh, thank you very much. Um, perhaps um, you can close your screen as well and we'll open it up to questions. If people feel uncomfortable about um, unmuting and asking a question, feel free to put your chat, your question in the chat box and I can ask on your behalf if you feel more comfortable that way. Um, just for the economics and econometrics, um, like double honours degree, if I have like three third year economics and three third year econometrics, is that enough? And like a good math background, is that enough? Yeah, um, the answer is provided you've um, uh, got uh, good enough uh, marks for them, yes, that, that will be enough. That, that sounds um, ideal for a, a joint honours in econometrics and economics, and you can decide whether you want to um, uh, be housed in the economics um, department or in the econometrics department. Um, um, but the, the certainly the set of subjects that you've got are, are, are totally appropriate and um, so sounds good. Yeah, you're just making sure because you need like at least four in each. Um, no, I, I think in that case, um, we, we would look at that one carefully because um, uh, uh, there's a lot of economics involved in some econometrics and vice versa and um, they're both uh, quite tightly uh, knitted together. Some of the economics students do uh, projects with um, a faculty from the econometrics department and vice versa. So um, um, uh, I, I think that background would be um, uh, good. Okay, okay, thanks. All right, um, we've got two chat questions and then, then I'll move over to um, Balaji. The first one in the chat box is, what if I graduate in the first semester of 2022? Can I apply? Mariah. Yeah, I think Mariah can handle that one. 
Yeah, no worries. So if you are studying in the first semester of 2022, as I said before, there's no mid-year entry to honours. So if you're not finishing at the end of this year or already have finished, then what you're going to need to look at is the 2023 applications and intake. Okay. And Mariah, probably the second one here for you as well. I completed my Bachelor of Actuarial Science in July 2020. Will I be able to enrol for the honours in 2023? Uh, certainly. So there is no time limit on studying into the honours program. Um, so we will consider all past study. It doesn't matter when you finished your undergraduate. Um, so it's just a matter of applying and obviously the, the coordinators with their selection committees will obviously have to deem you eligible for the course um, to receive an offer, but certainly you can apply. Okay, um, we'll head over to Balaji who's been waiting. Hey, um, thank you. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. So my first one is, uh, let's say I complete the introduction to machine learning, which is offered for the bachelor's students, so the third level unit. Um, I, I'm just asking this because um, there's a chance I don't get in, accepted into the honors program, right? But I still want to have the skills of you know machine learning and stuff when I finish my degree. So. If I do so and I still apply for the honours, will, will that um, in, in affect my studies or anything in any way? Is that a possibility? Um, the fact that you've done some undergraduate uh, machine learning is, is probably good. Um, the third year machine learning uh, units in um, the EBS department um, has a, a companion unit in the fifth um, at the fifth year level and um, you wouldn't be able to take the fifth year level because you've essentially already ca uh, covered most of the material there and maybe just done a little bit more. Um, but um, you would be able to take other machine uh, learning um, uh, or closely related uh, business analytics subjects instead. Um, and, and there are plenty, plenty of them. And there's also some in, in the IT department. Oh, okay, so um, if, if, if I put this through to the coordinator, then um, they, they can waive off the compulsory requirement on the unit, that's what you're saying? Yeah, it won't count. Um, you, the, the undergraduate thing that you've taken won't count as part of your honours degree, um, but um, you'll still be able to do the honours degree and just substitute another subject instead of the machine learning because you've already got the machine learning skills. Um, if you want to do more machine learning, then we can probably find you a course in IT or find you a um, high dimensional data reduction course or something that's quite um, uh, similar uh, for you to do instead. Thank you. And, and uh, sorry, uh, just another question, but um, are there a number of, uh, are there like, are there like a, so there's a limit of the, um, on the number of spots you can offer because this is quite an attractive option for actuarial students to get their exemptions done. And I would presume a lot would apply. So if the number of applications is really large or something, um, would you have to limit the number of spots available to the individual discipline, let's say actuarial studies? Um, my impression is that we could handle more honours students than we currently have. How many more, I don't know. Um, Mariah, do you have any, any insight on that? Um, in terms of numbers, I know each discipline generally does sort of have an ideal number that they go into an intake with. Um, EBS, econometrics, um, generally will... From past years, I would, I wouldn't want to put a number on it. I I know other disciplines that do put a definite number on it because they don't have the the same amount of teaching staff, so they do have to limit their uh, how many students they take in those. Um, but I'd say there's no definite limit. Um, if anyone's worried about because of um, CSP caps on domestic students. Um, then that's taken into account across the board, along with all the other CSP courses um, that business offer. So it's kind of spread out. If we, if coordinators in for honours want to um, give more offers, um, then then the the load basically is spread across you know undergraduate courses as well. Does that, does that make sense? 
Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right, let's move to Elvis. You've got a question. Yeah, I got a question. I, 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 I basically got my first question is um, actually now I'm degree is a student in computer science and commerce, double degree right now. I have already completed 144 three years, but I decided to drop out, drop off the degree early with the graduated with only commerce and uh, and uh, and with my major is econometrics, but actually I down pretty lot of the business analytics unit. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering like whether I'm still be able to get into the 2022 honors if I, if I, if I graduated summer B or I have to shut it earlier. My, my impression is, is yes, if you've done some business analytics units, they're going to count. And if you've done some econometrics units, there's going to count. And so you'd certainly be able to get into a, a joint EBS um, business analytics and econometrics uh, um, uh, uh, pathway um, and, and have a, a joint major in, in, in that case. Um, hopefully you'd be close to having a major in one of those. Um, so that we could swing you one way or the other. But um, uh, we, we take those sorts of things into consideration because we've got so many different sorts of units across EBS. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, I'm just wondering, if I graduate at a summer B, I'm, am I still qualified to the semester one of the 2022, uh, of the honours? Do you mean so semester one for next year, summer B next year? Next year? No, no, no. I, I, I'll, I'll complete this this year's summer B. Oh, uh, sorry. No, no, no. So for the for the coming summer B, I'll finish my. So summer year. summer B is generally taught from January to into February of twenty yep. of next year. Yep. Um, so with that, technically your results, your final result, and you won't be tech, like course completed or taking the alternate exit from your double degree um, yep. until probably after the semester starts. But we have had students in the past where we have. Um, allowed them if they are eligible for the honours uh, year to receive the offer um, before your final result is released. Um, and it might be pending, especially if that's a relevant unit that you're enrolled in into Summer B. Uh, um, summer B is not relevant unit. It's just it's a, not, about the capstone th things or electives. Oh, it's a capstone year. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, if it was a relevant unit, it might be dependent on the conditional, the offer might be conditional on you satisfying that unit with a particular mark. Um, but if it's not a, a, a major, one of your major units or something you need to get into the honours year, um, then I would say it's, it'll just be conditional on you completing that final unit and completing your course overall. Um, but it has, been, it, ha it has happened in the past where students are enrolled over the summer semester uh, and still will start in honours uh, in March when, when it happens. Yeah, so that's possible, right? If yes, it is possible. You know, it's not really good. Right. Okay, and my second, my second question is, uh, is it, is it? Uh, I, I know, I know from the past year, like they got it, they got it from one unit, like they will consider from the, uh, for example, if I want to take the econometrics and business analytics double specialization, and they will consider three, three, uh, three, three of each discipline, but. This year, I, I just I just looked at the the, the requirements. It's all gown, so I'm just wondering how many units will be taken into consideration for my double for my double for my joint joint econometrics and I course joint econometrics and business analytics. My guess is that well, I I can't give you a number, but uh, yeah. if if you've done enough units at third year level and done them well. Um, then I would anticipate that we would view that favourably. Okay, so there's no hard criteria for this, right? Yeah, we, we look at everything at a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, let's make this. Thank you. That's all okay. the Thank, thanks, Elvis. Let's move to um, Jared, and then after Jared, we have some further questions in the chat room. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation today. Um, my question is, so I'm at Caulfield doing business statistics. So I know that there's some overlap, but they're also not um, ATC units run at Clayton. So does not, does not necessarily disqualify me, but does that put me at a disadvantage um, compared to if I had done the 
stats and econometrics units at Clayton? It's, um, I, I think the way we would approach that is we, we get applications from um, other universities who have done similar courses, uh, which have similar material, and we would just look at what was in those courses and compare them with what was in the units in EBS and provided um, it was clear that you had the um, uh, right background and, and good enough marks, um, you could be considered um, um, I'm, I'm not aware of that happening, are, are you? Um, but it seems to me that that's how we would think about it, the same way um, any, any student who's done similar courses somewhere else, uh, but not exactly where we had based the degree, um, it, it would be considered. Um, right, no worries, thank you. I just wasn't sure because on the website yeah. it has prerequisites, including the corporate unit, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Okay. No worries, thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks, Jared. So we've got some questions in the chat box. So the first one is for any students who, are, who intend applying in 2023, will there be any changes to course structure or entry requirements? Maria, over to you. <laughs> um, I would say that for, I've been in with the business school for almost four years now, and I've been looking at all the honors, the honors applications each year across those four years and I have only seen them change very slightly uh, in that four years. So I would say that for 2023, you can be fairly confident that it won't change too much at all. There'll still be the requirement obviously to have relevant units um, and the ideal number on that would probably be four or more units that we're looking for for relevant relevancy to the discipline that you're applying to. Um, the, the other entry requirement obviously that won't won't change is that you do have to have an undergraduate degree to qualify for honours. Um, so that won't change, but you know, the prerequisites and um, for each discipline might might tweak between year, from year to year. Um, but other than that, I think you can be fairly confident that um, the interest requirements and the course structure won't change too much. Okay. Uh, next question. The last day to apply is the 30th of November. When will offers come out? Uh, so I did talk about that um, when I was having a look at the, the pages, but we're aiming for by the 22nd of December that all students should, um, should have their outcomes. Um, there have been times in the past where a couple of the other departments have had multiple rounds of offers going out. So some of them did go into January. Um, I don't believe, Heather, that was EBS last, last year or earlier this yeah. year. I um, there was a couple of the other departments. In this, so I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I'm fairly sure. You did? It wasn't. I think it was um, a couple of the other departments because they had some, they had interviews mm. for mm. their intakes. So they were a bit later to go out. But generally, you, you should hear probably something by the 22nd of December. Okay. Uh, next question I'll read out, but I think we've already answered this. Um, for the actual actuarial studies honours, I noticed there is an introduction to machine learning. If I do introduction to machine learning in, in, as an undergrad, do I need to do it again in my honours program? No, we wouldn't let you do it again, uh, is, is the short answer, but we would ask you to do something else. And, and that's something um, uh, you and I would negotiate. Um, um, to um, fill, you, you would have to do another unit, but you're not allowed to uh, take a unit that you've already taken. Okay. Uh, next one's an interesting one. Is uh, from Thomas. Is there anywhere we could look for some research project inspiration? Just want to know the types of projects people have done or are doing, and if we need to find a, a supervisor for the project. So do they need, do the students need to find their own supervisor for the project? The way it works in EBS, because um, a lot of students don't know where to start uh, with respect to finding their projects or thinking about their projects. Um, and in EBS, um, what we do is, um, or the coordinator, um, 
um, us, all of the uh, uh, faculty in the department to nominate a, a topic that they would be interested in supervising a student on. And it'll be a pretty broad sort of topic. And then that, that list of topics and the supervisor um, gets circulated very early in um, the semester and students can uh, choose from that. And um, that, that choice often goes, means going and talking to different, different um, uh, professors and lecturers and people about the project and uh, deciding whether or not you're interested in it. Um, and, um, and also if you're interested in working together because you do spend a lot of time with your supervisor during that year. And so there's gotta be some sort of chemistry there so that you can work together on, on the project. Um, so most of the topics are sorted out that way. Um, those of you who are interested can email me and I'll send you a list of the topics that went around uh, uh, earlier this year. Um, some students do um, come to the honours and specifically want to work on a particular uh, a topic and um, they're, they're allowed to do that uh, provided they can um, uh, talk with someone who is uh, or find someone uh, on faculty who's interested in supervising them. Um, and it is the case that uh, not, not all professors um, uh, are able to uh, teach uh, or supervise a student every year. Um, they may have lots of PhD students or a big teaching allocation that year or that sort of thing. And it's also the case that um, uh, professors might not want to do more than one student, supervise one student um, in any year either. So there's a, there's a little bit of, um, uh, 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 I'll call it shopping, but the student goes and talks to several supervisors and, and uh, figures out uh, what's going to work best for them. Um, given uh, their research interests. Um, but the professors are, are also um, uh, looking for people who are interested in their topics. So there's a, there's a little bit going the other way as well. Um, and um, uh, so it's, it's generally sorted out that sort of way. You can find your own topic. And if you can find a professor who's interested in, in supervising you, then um, that's, that's fine. Um, most students, because it's their first research project, um, prefer to work on something that's a bit better defined in the first place. Um, um, but um, I discuss that sort of thing with every student um, very early in the first semester so that you've got the whole year to, to work on the project. Okay. Um, we've got about six minutes left. Um, I've got one more, two more questions. Uh, with regards to the actual study, actuarial studies honours, if, this, if I have a few units that I still need to complete for the actuarial foundation program part, will it be possible to do those units as part of the additional units? Um, there is a limit of two third year subjects that you're allowed to take. Um, in honours. Everything else has to be a fourth year or a fifth year topic. And there's got to be a pretty good reason why you're doing those third year units too. So it depends a bit on, on um, that sort of thing. It also depends on, on whether you've got the right background to do the um, actuarial practice units, which are really part two stuff too. And, and there I'm not familiar with what the actuarial requirements are. So I couldn't ad advise you on that, but you could talk to the uh, actuarial, um, uh, uh, what's, what's Jackie's title, um, Deb? Um. Pro, uh, director, program director of actuarial studies. Yeah, the, the program director of actuarial studies, and I'm sure he'll be able to advise you on that. Um, and then, or I can talk to Jackie. Uh, you, you can talk to Jackie at some point, and then I can talk to Jackie, Jackie to make sure that it's, um, we have to make sure that it suits both what's going on with the actuarial program, as well as it suits whatever's happening with the um, honours program as well. Okay, look, we've got four minutes left. Um, Heather or Mariah, anything you would like? We don't have any more questions in the chat 
Ox, um, anything you'd like to add before we close the session? Um, well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and showing interest in the program. It is a good program. It is a lot of hard work. Um, you need to recognise that before you go in. Um, but it's, it's a program in which many students um, uh, learn much more than just um, technical stuff. Um, they learn communication skills and um, all sorts of things that are going to be useful for when they work. And um, it is the case that um, once they've graduated, they stay in touch with each other um, because most of them get really good jobs and start becoming very productive members of the um, community. And so it's, it's uh, the start of a, a good work network, I suppose. So I'd like to say that and encourage, if, if, you've got the, um, if you've got the skills and the will, you have to have the will. Being smart isn't enough. You've got to be able to work as well. Um, so um, uh, then go ahead and um, uh, apply and we'd like to see you. Okay. All right, I might um, stop the recording, wrap it up, but um, as you've noted, we'll contact everybody and all the necessary links and details from today's presentation. Yeah. Mariah, do you know how those, um, who, who puts up the videos and the, um, um, the slides and that sort of stuff? Um, you can forward it. There is a, a contact in the, the website team, if you will, um, who can put it up on the honours uh, website page um, if you want it to go into there. Yeah, so um, should, um, I, I don't know who that contact is. Can, <laughs> you can send it to I, me. I, and I, I can forward. send it to you and you'll forward it on? Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> or great. Or Deborah, if you know who it is. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We'll work it out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, that's, that's really good. And I'd, I'd like to thank um, both um, Deborah and Mariah for um, coming to this session too. It's um, It's been very um, helpful for me because it's the first of these that I've conducted. So, All right. uh, yep. Well, we'll be Have a good day, everyone. Thanks. Bye bye. Yep. Okay.